favourite aspect of my research so far has kind of been twofold. The first, I'd say, is meeting individuals who've actually been associated with CTE, people who have played rugby and football and have been involved in the Olympics. It's been important, I think, in order to speak to these people, to understand what they're going through, to put an actual person to be associated, to have, an, to have a person associated with the disorder that you're studying. Because often, surrounded by this laboratory tech, technicians and techniques and other academics, and it's, it's wonderful, but to understand that what you're doing has an application, it can actually help people, has been really fulfilling. Another aspect that I find uh, particularly fulfilling about my work has been the ability to, to kind of apply creative applications to understanding a disease that it might actually go beyond just chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Some of the work that we're doing is focusing on bits of the vasculature and luckily as we have this kind of old collection we're realizing that what's changing in these boxes which isn't just in CTE are changes around the vasculature around the blood vessels. I think it, I think it deserves more attention and I think what actually we're doing is we're able to add our own unique spin to this investigation and to our understanding of chronic traumatic encephalopathy. We have many further plans for investigations for chronic traumatic encephalopathy. One of which, which is really exciting, is the use of 3D immunohistochemistry or tissue clearing. Uh, what we're doing is we're able to take this fixed tissue and this archival tissue and we're able to turn it transparent. And by turning it transparent, what we're actually able to do is instead of taking seven or eight or 30 micron thick slides to examine, we're able to take one, two, three millimeter blocks of tissue and understand pathology in three dimension. So we're able to look at many different types of proteins and genes and areas of pathology and how they interact with each other in three dimensions. So it will allow us to further understand what's going on. Another aspect that we're looking into, like I was saying, was the vasculature. One of the important facets of CTE is the preponderance of the deposition of tau is around the vasculature, it's around the blood vessels. So some of the work in our lab is focusing on the vasculature and its role within the development of pathology. And what we're seeing is something really interesting, that the pathology itself is part and parcel with, with tau. The vascular pathology comes as much as the tau pathology does. And obviously I think it would be silly to think that only the tau is involved in CT because it's so incredibly focal that I think there's a multifactorial response going on in CTE. It, it's going to be something to do with the immune response, the vasculature, tau, and I'm sure there are other proteins that have kind of made its way into causing what we're seeing as this clinical feature. I think advice to early career researchers who are interested in CTE that I would give is be as creative as you can. I think what's really important is we're at a new frontier. Nothing has been done on CTE, which allows you to be as creative and as scientifically adventurous as you can be. Why be shackled by the old ideas and ideologies of this is what it should be? You know, where you have something like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's in which year, years and years and years of research has been going on. CTE is relatively recent. I think be as creative and, and fun and exciting as you can be and uh, yeah, the sky's the limit. <laughs>